The next and final sound we're going to go through is a sequencer sound. Right down here. And it's the first one called two notes. Now the sequencer ones play a sequence on many different notes just by holding down one key. Let's see what this one does. So this preset plays a pattern based on this LFO right here. LFO1, let's dissect it and break it down. There's no sub and no noise. But we have oscillator A and oscillator B. Let's see what oscillator A is doing. It seems to be working through the wavetable position using LFO1. Let's hear oscillator B. It's doing a similar thing, except it's using LFO2. Right here? Let's turn it back on and notice both of the waves are the same. They're both harmonic series, but the difference is oscillator A is minus 2 for the octave, oscillator B is minus 1. So right off the bat, they're an octave away from each other. Let's check the global, and we're not using any stacking. Let's check the matrix. We're using LFO1 and LFO2, like I mentioned, for the wavetable position for each one of our oscillators. Then we have macro 1, this button right here. And that's set up to be our filter mix, which is right here. Right now, our filter is turned off. But if we raise macro one up, it'll make this filter part of the mix. And it looks like it's going to create distortion. using the sample and hold filter right here, which is under miscellaneous, sample and hold. That's creating some distortion for oscillator B. Let's turn this off. Then we have macro two, which is the delay wet under our effects right here. It adjusts this. So if we pull this down, we shouldn't hear any delay. It's dry. Bring it up. And we have a whole bunch. And finally, we have the mod wheel, which is for our reverb and the wet dry knob. Right here? Let's try that. That's a pretty long reverb. So that's it for our modulations. But let's go back and see how it's creating this pattern using the wavetable position. Let's turn B off and let's just hear A. And let's turn off the delay for now. Let's go to LFO1 and here's our pattern. Let's look at it in 2D so we can see how the waveform changes. Each waveform is a different size, creating a different pitch. So instead of using tuning with our LFO and these steps, it's just switching waveforms. Another way of doing this is switching this waveform back to our saw, turn it off on the wavetable position, and instead put this LFO on under our semitones. Now this pattern is going to play different notes or different pitches of this wave. That's too low. Let's go up a few octaves. Creates a similar effect. 
go a little higher. But instead of using wave tables, we're changing the pitch of this one wave. But let's put it back to the way it was. And let's hear it again as it jumps through each step. And of course, we can draw this or redraw it just by moving these around. Let's try a lower note. Bring this one up higher. And just like that, we change the pattern. Bring this up a bit. Now let's check out the pattern on our slate of B, which is LFO2. It's a little bit different. Let's view it in 2D. Pretty simple. And here's our waveform right here. Harmonic series. Let's change it to harmonic morph, which should be a bit different. Bring it up a few octaves. And let's mix that in with this one. Let's bring some distortion in right here. Add portamento. I think you get the idea. Let's put this back. And this is how it started. Back to our preset. And there's a whole bunch of other ones to choose from as well. Acid time. Big fat squeezer. Chord simple. The list goes on and on, but all these presets are worth exploring and tweaking them for your own personal needs. So anyway, this is Serum Explained. Hopefully, you have a better grasp on this synthesizer, and I hope you explore this synth as much as possible to get the best possible sounds for your productions. So I'll see you next time.